All right. Welcome to another um, lecture um, for this module's little lecture. We'll be talking about Pocahontas. Um, and for my little title for this week's um, module, I chose to um, put it as a nationalist narrative because I think it guides the discussion that we're going to have about Pocahontas. Um, so what's the story? Um, so this one's an interesting one. Um, this is about a Native American woman named Pocahontas. And um, one day some colonial settlers, um, including um, John Smith, um, settle onto the um, coast and make their way into the land. And um, Pocahontas um, falls in love with John Smith but it is kind of a forbidden love because they come from two different worlds, the colonials and the Native Americans. And so we see this um, kind of secret love affair um, blossom. Finally, um, we get to a point where um, John Smith is captured and is about to be killed and Pocahontas um, throws herself on top of him as the kind of ultimate sacrifice, saying that she um, will sacrifice herself to um, so John doesn't get killed. Um, and then in the end, John Smith goes back to um, Europe, but their love still kind of lives on. So it's kind of this bittersweet love story featuring um, a kind of intercultural um, relationship, um, which we'll get more into um, as we go. So the original Pocahontas. Um, so Pocahontas was a real Native American woman, woman who um, is believed to have been born around 1596. Um, she was the daughter of Powhatan, the, uh, rich, the, uh, um, the paramount chief of the Powhatan people. Um, her real name was Amunut. Um, Pocahontas was a nickname that stood for playful or ill-behaved. Um, and so Captain John Smith arrived in what is now called Virginia in 1607 when Pocahontas was around 10 or 12 years old. And so according to Smith's account um, in a general history of Virginia, he was captured upon arrival and ordered to be executed by Chief Powhatan. And Pocahontas, according to Smith's account, rushed in to save him from execution. And Smith was later released back to Jamestown, Virginia. Um, so there's a lot of debate over Smith's account. Um, people are wondering, you know, was he lying to cover up um, the kind of ill-based um, reputation of the colonial settlers, et cetera. Um, and some people, um, one thing that's touched on in the true story of Pocahontas, The Other Side of History by Dr. Linwood, Little Bear Custolo, and Angela L. Daniel Silverstar um, is that could this execution actually have been a ceremony um, kind of honoring and welcoming um, Captain John Smith to um, the country, to the new land. Um, so there, there's definitely some debate over the original Pocahontas. Um, the story is just not um, recorded in a very, you know, concrete way where we can um, tell exactly the facts. So additionally, um, around 1610, Pocahontas married Kukum, and they allegedly had a child. Um, in 1613, Pocahontas was captured for ransom and Kukum was killed. Um, so in 1614, Pocahontas was wed to John Rolfe, a tobacco farmer, and was forced to convert to Christianity and change her name to Rebecca. And Pocahontas was then presented to the English Society to show that savages, quote unquote, could be civilized, quote unquote. Um, so why has this story been told so differently all these years? Why even in modern day education, without the Disney movie. Um, why are we being told this story of Pocahontas? Um, why is this the narrative that we are receiving in um, formal education? And um, Smithsonian did an interview with Camila Townsend 
um, who's a history professor at um, Rutgers University. And um, I just really like this quote. Um, that story that Pocahontas was head over heels in love with John Smith has lasted for many generations. He mentioned it himself in the colonial period, as you say. Then it died, but was born again after the revolution in the early 1800s when we were really looking for nationalist stories. Ever since then, it's lived in one form or another, right up to the Disney movie and even today. I think the reason it's been so popular, not among Native Americans, but among people of the dominant culture, is that it's very flattering to us. The idea is that this is a good Indian. She admires the white man, admires Christianity, admires the culture, wants to have peace with these people, is willing to live with these people rather than her own people, marry him rather than one of her own. That whole idea makes people in white American culture feel good about our history, that we were not doing anything wrong to the Indians, but really were helping them and the good ones appreciated it. Um, just kind of connecting this to another idea, kind of misconception that we are often taught in um, a Western education is um, the idea of Thanksgiving. Um, there is a whole other narrative to um, the Thanksgiving story. Um, and I think it's really important that we bring up these um, stories and these criticisms because we do hear a narrative over and over again. And we kind of soon, sometimes we mistake the popularity of that narrative as the credibility for it when sometimes it's simply just the popularity of it. Um, and obviously it um, is kind of promoted and um, continues to live on through this feeling of kind of clearing the white person, clearing themselves of the um, dark past that they have with um, Native American culture and Native American people. Um, so I think that's a really important aspect to talk about when we're talking about Pocahontas, just because it is such a clear element in this story. So um, Disney's version of Pocahontas um, so musical, it was a musical historical drama film released in 1995, um, and this was during Disney's Renaissance, which um, is a period where Disney returned to producing animated films after taking a little bit of a break from them, um, and it was directed by Mike Gabriel and Eric Goldberg, um, and it was influenced by William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, um, and feature animations, a different um, film Produce, film producer, um, com film producing company was working on an animated version of the tale. And so you can definitely see elements of William and Shakespeare, William Shakespeare's uh, Romeo and Juliet in Pocahontas because um, these, um, these films were being worked on at the same time. There were elements, people were, some people were working on the story, stories at the same time. Um, so we definitely see that kind of forbidden love um, element of Romeo and Juliet in Pocahontas. Um, so it received a good deal of criticism upon initial release, um, but was overall a general success, over $346 million in the box office. Um, it received two Academy Awards for Best Musical Score and Best Original Song for Colors of the Wind. Um, the soundtrack for this movie um, has stood the test of time, and many argue that it is the, one of the um, best movie soundtracks for a um, Walt Disney production um, in a while, um, really long time. Um, so I think it is interesting, um, the creative element that is put into this um, and how that is, um, you know, critically accepted um, as well. And then here, um, I do like these movie posters because um, oftentimes they do have these quotes like we've seen with um, Cinderella about the Technicolor um, technology and Snow White with, you know, this was, that was Disney's first um, film production or uh, full length um, animation. So this one is An American Legend Comes to Life. Um, and so it is kind of establishing almost like in almost like when you see in horror movies where it's based on a true story um, or um, this, you know, it's like this is this really happened. And so um, viewers are supposed to believe it, establishing its own credibility, um, which we need to be critical of. So differences between the original and the movie. Um, so Pocahontas's age is really the big one. And it's the big one that's talked about most in the um, you know, critical element of the story. So um, 
at the time of meeting John Smith, um, if Pocahontas and John Smith ever met, that is a debate for a separate time. Um, Pocahontas would have been around 10 or 11 years old. Um, but in the movie, Pocahontas is shown as much older because it's kind of love at first sight. And so in reality, um, John Smith would have been falling in love with a 10 or 11 year old Pocahontas um, in the movie. Um, in the, in the, um, in the movie, Pocahontas is supposed to marry Kukum. It's kind of like an arranged marriage situation. Um, and Pocahontas married Kukum in real life, but, um, he was killed and she was, um, captured shortly after their marriage. Um, but in the movie, Pocahontas expresses extreme distaste to marrying Kukum. So this is an interesting way, um, to kind of represent that history because obviously, um, there is record that they did get married. Um, but these um, Western film producers are trying to make it look like she didn't want to get married to him. Um, she wanted to be married to John Smith. Um, so John Smith's character, he's portrayed in the movie as an honorable man, with a kind heart, kind of like the um, poster boy for the colonial settlers. Um, but in real life, Smith was a member of the violent settlers who looted and burned um, Native American villages down and was a very destructive, part of a very destructive force, um, especially for Native American culture. Um, and then in language is another one. So in real life, most Native Americans spoke little to no English. Um, if anything, we kind of get into another story of Squanto, who kind of served as a translator in between the um, settlers and Native American communities. Um, but in this movie, um, no language barriers present in the movie at all. Um, there's no kind of difficulty present with that. Um, so there definitely are some historical inaccuracies um, in this movie. So um, those are um, my sources. This is all I have for you. Um, but I really want you to um, take a minute to reflect on this movie. Um, I think this is a big one because oftentimes this, um, this is um, Western children's first exposure to Native American communities. And um, we need to understand, we need to kind of come to terms with the um, idea that this is the first idea that, like this is the first exposure that people are, um, getting of Native American culture. And so um, no wonder why this story just keeps living on and keeps getting distorted um, when this is the narrative that we're pushing. And so I think this um, raises a lot of questions about changes in the education system and changes about raising um, cultural and historical awareness, um, especially since um, a lot of us are living on um, Native American land that was taken. Um, and so I think we need to work on um, historical accuracies um, and balancing that element of entertainment for children while still pushing a narrative that is true um, and respective to respective communities. Um, so yeah, so go on to the um, post um, action kind of reflection questions and just think about theirs. There'll be more um, in more in detail um, down below. Uh, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.